Okay, good morning. Welcome to uh, this month's webinar. This month's webinar we're going to be doing on custom reports. If, you, uh, if this is your first time joining us, um, I just want everyone to know, since there are a lot of people on the webinars, we, um, we do mute them. If you have any questions uh, as I'm going through anything, I ask that you email us at the crc at pennyatworks.com email. At the end of the webinar, I'm going to take a look and um, look at your questions and try to answer what I can. If I don't get to your question today, I will touch base with you later this afternoon. Okay, well, we're going to get started. So this, as I said, this is a webinar on custom reports. Um, so why use custom reports? Well, custom reports gives you the ability to customize to include both the data you want with the look you want. And we talk about RPX, and that's interchangeable. RPX, custom reports, you'll hear us uh, refer to them in two different ways. Well, the RPX, well, that is the file format, and that's the file format used by Active Reports, which is our third-party software that we use in the report creation. So similar to .pdf or XLS, we have RPX. So that's what we refer to when we talk about RPX and custom reports. All of our custom reports are found on the Fun tab under custom reports. Now for the purpose of this webinar, we're going to be looking at the partner capital custom report, the partner statement. But just note that all the principles we're going to discuss are applicable to any of the custom reports. So let's get started. So when you're looking at custom reports, when you click the pencil, you're going to get your browse screen similar to other areas of Penny. And if you're going to start from scratch, uh, you're going to hit Add. Now what that does is it brings up a template of a report already set up. Now version 10.1 and earlier, we just have one template per custom report. But good news is in our next release, which is set to come out in September, we're going to have more options. So that's something we've been working on is to provide more than one template to give you just a couple different options for starting points in creating your reports. So if you hit Add, what that's going to do is open up your custom report. And as I said, this is the template here. Now to save, you can do a couple things. You can either hit save or even just X out of it and as if you want to save the changes. So I'm just going to save this as Kristen test. And before doing anything, let's just run it and see what the template looks like. So without doing anything, you can use these templates and you can see here's the basic template for my partner statement. It has the fun name, has the dates, capital numbers. Now I'm going to go with most people are going to want to make changes to this. So let's go over how to do that. So I'm going to reopen this. And this looks a little overwhelming, right? But don't be scared. We're going to go over it. So what we're looking at here, this is the design tab. And I know the first time I opened this, one of my questions was, what's with the different colors and the overlapping? Just looks a little overwhelming. Well, anything in green, that's a non-visible field. So it means that doesn't show on the report. So why do we have it in this template? Well, because they're used in the script. So while they don't have a standalone value, they're incorporated into other areas, so it makes it easier to have them there to reference. So because they're not visible, they can be anywhere on the report. So that's why you'll see sometimes they overlap. So this design tab, this is the visual representation of the report data that will be returned. So this is what the report's going to look like. You'll notice there's several bands on the report. You have page header. Now the page header that's similar to if you ever you know, worked in Word, any information here is going to repeat at the top of every uh, statement. So this is a good place to put a picture or your logo. 
Now this report has a page header in detail. If you right click, there's actually a third option called group header and footer. So this area can be used to group together reports. So for example, let's say you have an investor with three separate investments and they're in three separate investor roles. So if you were just to run this report, they would get three statements. But what if you don't want it to look like three separate statements, you just want it to look like one three-page statement. So let's say you just want information such as the fund name or the date to repeat at just the, the first of his three statements. So this is what you would use the group header for. Now the detail band, this is where the fun happens. This is each row um, returned from the data grid. So this is the information that's going to be different for each investor. So here's where you would have capital numbers, addresses, uh, investor names, such. So on the left, we're going to move to the left for a minute. And over here, this is what's called the toolbox. So this is where you have additional design options and can add things to the report. So you have several to choose from. The first here, you have a label. Now a label, that's static text. So for example, investor statement. That's not going to change per investor. That's not going to change depending on the date. That's always just going to say investor statement. So that's static text, so that would be a label. Text box. This is the most common one that we use. This represents a single field of data from the data grid. So it can be any piece of data um, and any individual piece of information that you want to display on the report. And to use these, you just click and drag into your report. Once it's in the report, you can expand it and change its size. You can move it around. Also, for design options, you have lines. Again, that's just for the look of the report. You can add in, so example, total capital, we have a line underneath, it just makes it look pretty. I mentioned in the, uh, when talking about the headers, you can add pictures and logos. So we have picture boxes that can go in as well. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but as we're sitting here looking at the left, we have a whole section over here on the right. I'm just going to expand it a little bit so we can see it a little better. And if you'll notice, as we go through the different types of box, from picture box to text box, the properties over here change. This is the properties window. And this is where you fill the box with the information. So we have here, it was a picture box. So we can go down to image, and this is, it's through this that you can select an image or a picture to bring in. So I'm going to bring in a picture. If you have your, your labels, your static information, here is where under the text you would type in what you want that information to be. So maybe instead of investor statement, you want it to say amazing investor statement. So changing it here in the text box is going to change it on your statement. Also with text box, here's where I said, you know, it represents uh, a piece of information from the data grid. So you have to tell it, well, which piece, uh, w what information? So through the data field, let me just find it. If you click on data field, it's going to give you a list of all the different data fields you can pull from Penny. So you can go through and say people code, people name, transfers, capital. Now, going through this, you might say this is a long list that doesn't seem to be in alphabetical order. So it might be a little difficult to find exactly what you're looking for. So we thought the same thing. So in version 10.1, we added what's called a field selector. Now what the field selector does is take that list of data points and gives you the ability to search through it and sort it. So if you want a year-to-date value, 
if you type in year to date, it's going to give you all the year to date values available. So you can search by name, you can search by category. If you're looking for fee information, if you go to fees, it will give you not just the name, but a little better description of what it is as well. So you can select it, hit update, and then that will populate in. Another thing to note with the text box is sometimes the, the data fields, they don't have the prettiest names. So when it shows on the statement, you can change not the data field that it's pulling, but just how it appears on this designer tab. And that's just for ease of use uh, when you're working with the reports. So if you wanted to call this, it, this data field was redemption fee beginning, and let's just say you want to call it redemption. So here on the designer tab, that's just what it's going to show. So it's going to pull the field redemption fee beginning, but on your report, it's just going to show redemption. Now again, this is just for the designer tab. When you run the report, it's actually going to pull in the value. So we're going to take a look next at the script tab. Now this is for more complex calculations and formatting. So when using this tab, you should really be familiar with VBScript, which is the script that is used. So for example, this is where you would add functions um, such as concatenating, deleting filtering data, uh, dynamically changing the sort. Um, this does get a little bit complicated. What we did pro uh, do provide is if you go into the help file. In the overview section, if you go under reports, there's a great area called custom reports. And this not only gives you some information um, on what we're discussing today, but there's a section at the bottom called advanced programming techniques. And here we list out some examples of the more common scripts um, that are used. Also, as a reference, um, I mentioned Active Reports is the third-party software that we use. That is a very popular software. It's used by many companies, so they have uh, resources available as well. So if you go to the Active Reports website, uh, they have resources. Also, they have a great file, uh, a PDF file with um, development tips that we have posted to Basecamp under the Penny Public folder. So that's another area you can go to get information. Now, as you're going through and making changes, as with any uh, file you're working with, you always want to remember to save your changes. So again, if you hit File, Save Changes, it's going to cha uh, save all the changes you make. So this is manipulating a, uh, an RPX file from the start. What if someone gives you an RPX file? So let's say we develop it for you, or someone else in your company emails you a file and says, hey, run this report. How would you get that in there? So what you would do is hit Add, as if you were creating a new one. And the standard template's going to appear. But what you do is you go to File, Open External Template File. And it's going to prompt you to go, uh, you can find the directory where it's saved. You just double click the RPX. And it's going to bring in the new RPX. So you can see, here's another report that we created that looks vastly different than the template. So this just gives you an idea of how much you can change uh, the format of these reports. So once you have it in there, I'm going to save my changes. I'm going to call this new RPX. And let's run it and see what it looks like. So as you can see, this is a completely different format, and this just gives you an example of what you can do with these custom reports. One item to note, a lot of times when you're working with custom reports, you, want, you make a change and then you want to see what it looks like. Just note you don't have to close out and reopen everything. So you can hear, I'm going to keep this um, printout of it open, 
and I'm going to go back into my new RPX. So let's say I want to make a change. And let's just say I want to call that period instead of current period. I can hit save. I can go back to my report, hit refresh, and without having to exit out of the RPX or exit out of the statement, I can see what the changes are made. Okay, well this pretty much wraps up our webinar. I'm just going to take a minute now and just see if any questions have come through. Okay, um, the first question, uh, we talked about data fields. Are all fields in Penny available for each report? Um, and the answer to that is, is no. There are a tremendous amount of data fields in Penny. And what we've done is uh, done a little bit of a sort and only pull the relevant fields for each report. So for example, you know, we've been working with the partner statement custom. If you go to the field selector and you look at all your data fields, you're not going to see your share-based fields because this is a partner statement. However, if you go to the shareholder statement, those fields will be available. So they, each report doesn't have every field in Penny. Um, it is uh, filtered. So one other question here is, um, is there a place to set margins? Uh, yes, so when printing this, if you go into an RP, the RPX, on the right-hand side, there's a button called Settings. If you double-click on that, it's going to bring up your margins. And similar to working in Word or Excel, you're able to adjust your uh, margins. You can also, under Printer Settings, choose the size as well. So you can print these in legal form or letter form. Um, Another thing to note, too, is when you look at all the text on these reports, similar to Word, you can pick your font. So if you go over here into the Properties window, you can pick the color, you can pick the font. If I double-click, it's going to bring up a lot of the familiar fonts, uh, Times New Roman, for example. And you can pick the size and the um, you can bold, italicize, etc. So you can customize uh, that as well. Okay. So as you can see, custom reporting uh, for basic reports, um, it can be basic, it can be pretty easy to do. It also can get rather complex. Um, so I just want to point out we do offer the service of creating RPXs for you if you feel that uh, you need help. Um, you can speak to your client relationship manager and they can go through the process, or, you know, go over the process with you of putting together a BRD, which is a business requirement document, and how to go about getting the rough cost estimate for that. But if you do have questions, of course, reach out to us at the CRC email. And join us again next month. We're going to be doing another webinar. Uh, next month's topic is special allocations. So thank you so much for joining us this month, and hopefully we will see you next month. Thank you so much. Bye.